Hi, welcome to Kinetics Part 1. My name is Dr. English, and today we're going to be talking about an introduction to chemical kinetics. Specifically, we're going to be looking at defining chemical kinetics, mapping a chemical reaction, activation energy, collision theory, defining an effective collision. So how do we define chemical kinetics? Kinetics is concerned with rates of reaction. In other words, how fast a reaction is going, how many moles are consumed or produced in a unit of time. That's what we're looking at when we talk about chemical kinetics. Also, the mechanism or the steps in the chemical reaction. Because in regions chemistry, in a lot of basic chemistry courses, we start by looking at a chemical reaction and we see reactants and products, but we really don't think about what's happening in between from getting from reactants to products. This leads us to talking about the rate of a chemical reaction. Rate is measured in terms of the number of moles of reactant consumed or the number of moles of products formed per unit of time. And that time could be seconds, minutes, hours, days, years. Really depends on what type of chemical reaction you're looking at. A chemical reaction is when reactants are forming products at a certain rate. So here our reactants A plus B form this, what we're going to know as an intermediate, to form a single product of C. Another thing that we need to realize here is that different reactions occur over different time intervals. A nuclear explosion, like we see in these images below, occurs quite quickly, very fast versus the decomposition of radioactive material. Over here we have uranium, which takes years and years and years to break down into something that is more stable. Mapping a chemical reaction. Rate mechanism is a series of steps that starts with the reactants and ends with the products. States that chemical reactions do not occur in one single step. Chemical reactions occur in a series of simpler steps involving the collision of two or more particles at a time, which leads us to the idea of intermediate steps, usually not observed yet contribute to the overall reaction. Different intermediate steps have different rates of reaction. The overall rate of reaction is determined by the slowest intermediate step, or what we'd call the rate determining step. And if you go on to an honors chemistry course or advanced placement chemistry, you learn about how a rate determining step influences a chemical reaction in more detail. Activation energy, the energy needed to start a chemical reaction. Activation energy can be defined as the difference between the potential energy of the activated complex and the potential energy of the reactants. Now, we haven't gone into how to map a potential energy diagram yet, and we will be doing that in the future. But just to look at the concept of activation energy, this is what you need to know. Here are my reactants, A plus B, and I'm going to call that R for reactants. And here are my products, C plus D. So let's put a P right here. There is a certain amount of energy that needs to be put into this reaction to get from the reactants to the products. The way that we measure that is that we can look at the difference between what we call the potential energy of the reactants, so potential energy of the reactants, and the potential energy of the activated complex. So this top of this bump right here is called the activated, activated complex. And that's not really a reactant nor a product. It's basically our intermediate, and it's very, very unstable. So this is the potential energy, a measurement, a potential energy of the activated complex, because we can see over here on our y-axis that this is measuring potential energy in kilojoules. And over on the y-axis, this is the progress of the reaction right here. So what I want to do is I want to find the difference between the potential energy of the reactants and the potential energy of the activated complex, which is this area right here. So I would look at the difference between 100 and 40. So the activation energy needed to get from the reactants 
to the top of the activated complex here would be 100 minus 40. So I would need 60 kilojoules of energy, let's see, kilojoules, kilojoules of energy to get from the reactants to the top of the activated complex in order for the reaction to go forward. So let's go back to our notes. When particles collide with sufficient energy, and this is important, at least equal to the activation energy, existing bonds may be disrupted or broken, and new bonds can form. So the whole point of activation energy is to take these bonds that appear in our reactants, break the bonds in the reactants up, rearrange them, form these intermediate complex, which is very, very unstable, and then finally get onto products. But the energy needed to break those bonds, the energy that we need to put in, that is known as activation energy. Collision theory. Chemical reactions depend on collisions between reacting species. Now, the definition of a species can be pretty much anything, atoms, molecules, ions, or any other particles. So this word species is sort of an overarching concept. A reaction occurs only when the reactants have sufficient kinetic energy, speed, and are at the correct orientation to form a high energy, unstable intermediate product. The reactants form a short-lived complex that is neither reactant nor product, but has partial characteristics of both. This transitional structure is known as the activated complex. Activation energy is therefore the energy needed to achieve the activated complex and continue on to the formation of products. The activated complex may then break apart to form products. Let's talk about the definition of an effective collision. A collision that results in the formation of a product or products is called an effective collision. Not all collisions are effective, and that's important to note. In other words, reactant particles will simply bounce off each other and not form products. In general, any factor that causes more collisions to take place or causes more effective collisions will increase the rate of a reaction, and we'll talk about that more in the future. So what is required for a reaction to occur successfully? Particles must have enough kinetic energy, speed, and they must be oriented properly. So what I'd like to do now is look at a FET simulation that basically shows how we can see what an effective collision looks like. So into this little reaction chamber that we see right here, I'm going to put in a couple of yellow particles. There's my yellow particles. So that's one of my reactants. I'm also going to add another reactant, which is this B with a little gray sphere on it. And initially, when they go in, they just sort of bounce off of one another. They're not doing all that much. They're just remaining as reactants. We can do certain things in this simulation to show an effective collision. So what I'm going to do is raise the temperature. So I'm going to add a little fire to this. And if I, as I raise the temperature here, we can see that the kinetic energy is increasing. And we can also see that effective collisions, like the one that we see right here, are suddenly occurring. So we started, if you look over at this potential energy diagram over here, we started with our total average kinetic energy being lower. As we raise the kinetic energy, we have the ability to have enough speed, and if they hit with the proper orientation, to form products. And one of the products here would be this yellow-purple combination. So I want to get up to where the top of this activation energy. I want to put in enough energy that they're going to collide with enough energy and the proper orientation. So let's raise the temperature again. All right, whoa. Gone a little bit past, a little bit past it. Uh, the amount of energy needed to get past the activated complex. But now when I look at this, I can see that we are forming more products. There's more energy, there's more effective collisions. If they hit correctly, we can see ultimately, and we have two of them right here really quickly before they collide and lose the purple sphere again, we could see that we can form some products. So to summarize, if you have enough energy and the proper orientation, when these particles collide, we can have more effective collisions. So what did we learn in this tutorial? We went over the definition of chemical kinetics. We talked about mapping a chemical reaction, 
activation energy, collision theory, and the definition of effective collisions. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.